Well, hello. Welcome to Fix It for Josh's Sake. Today, I want to take you on a little journey with me. I have not done uh, what I'm going to be doing today, and that is I have not worked on one of these hex clutches that uh, were put on a lot of Articats from maybe 19, early 1970s, maybe 74, somewhere in there, to early 80s. Uh, but I want to take one of these clutches here. Let me see if I can give you a better view. Pull this hood up. Here it is. Uh, and I want to dig into this and find out what it's about, how it's put together, uh, how to rebuild it. Because I have a motor I want to run one on. And uh, so I'm documenting this because I want to have kind of a record of how it's put together so I know how to work on it and, uh, you know, use it in the future. So come on with me as I fix it for Josh's sake. To get to the details on this Articat Cheetah snowmobile, the motor that's in here is a Kawasaki motor. So that means that while Articat was made in Minnesota, in the United States, and you'd think it'd be standard, this motor has metric uh, bolts in it. And so the clutch bolt here is a 19 millimeter. All right. So got my right socket here. Now I'm going to grab my strong arm and spin that out. Now, I locked out because this motor is locked up. <laughs> That's why it's sitting back here, which obviously is not luck at all. That sucks when a motor locks up. But what I'm getting at is uh, I was able to easily use my breaker bar and pop that bolt loose because this motor is not going to turn at all, and that bolt's going to be able to easily spin off this clutch. But there are some uh, techniques you'd have to use to hold your pistons in place if you needed to get this clutch off of a good working motor, make sure you Google that and get some good resources on how to do that. This is what the bolt looks like that comes out of the center of that clutch. Uh, I'm going to set that aside. The key thing I'm looking at is down in here is a set of threads that are near the top or the end of this hex uh, clutch face. And those threads are what we actually use to pull this clutch off. This bolt sits way inside and connects to the crankshaft inside of this motor. These threads right here are intended to thread a bolt onto and press against that crankshaft and pop this clutch off. So we're going to tackle that next. All right, we need to do a little uh, research here to figure out how we're going to get this clutch off. First thing is I got my caliper here, right? So we're going to turn that on and we're going to measure how long this bolt is. So, uh, one end to the other, it's 5.27, so we'll call that about, I don't know, we'll actually look at the depth of the, of the bolt surface area, uh, 4.9, let's just call it a 5-inch bolt, okay, so it's like a 5-inch bolt, um, obviously it's metric, so that's a whole other challenge, but you can do the math in your head, call it a 5-inch bolt, <clears throat> the other thing we need to do is figure out how far it goes into this clutch, right here. So then what I do is I take my caliper and I set, extend it all the way out, which is six inches, and we know that it's a five inch bolt. So, okay, that starts to max out right there. I can feel it starting to hit. So then I'm going to push that in there to right there. Okay, that's the bottom of it. Kind of wiggle it around to be sure it's hitting the bottom. Yep. And then I'm going to lock it. We're going to come out and look at it here. And we are at 5.4 which is just shy of five and a half inches. That's how deep the uh, space is inside of there, which means we need to have something that pushes from these threads down into the shaft of the motor, the crankshaft of the motor, uh, five and a half inches. I have some bolts that I have in the past, you know, they started out a lot like this, and then I put them in my drill press, and I took a grinder, and I ground them down, and uh, that way I can stick them inside of here and not mess up the threads on the crankshaft of the motor, but also give myself a pushing surface to uh, push, pop this clutch off. So <clears throat> the shorter one, I think, is going to be my ticket. That's going to allow me put to push in there while simultaneously allowing a bolt to thread onto the back of this and pop that loose.
That's my strategy. We'll see if we can make this work. Okay, so I did some fancy math, and if I take this and stick it into here, and I go get myself a bolt that fits in those threads and pushes on the back of this and into the center of the crankshaft in this motor, I need an inch and a half volt bolt. So I'm going to run to the hardware store and grab that so that it threads in there and pops this clutch loose. All right, we're in luck right here. This 14 by uh, 1.5 pitch. This M14 is the bolt we need. It's right here. Let's see this one. And that is the bolt that will push into the center of that clutch and pop it off of the drive shaft. There we go. Moving forward. All right. We're back here at the clutch. A couple of key things. Penetrating oil. I sprayed a bunch of that in the hole here and at the back of the uh, clutch where it's connected on to the crankshaft. Second thing I'm going to do is I've got some oil here. And I'm going to be oiling up this bolt really good because I want it to have nice smooth threads as it goes in there. And then uh, here's my bolt that I have. And I'll be dropping that into here. It is shorter than that hole. So once it goes in there, we've got to commit to uh, threading it in. So make sure you have the right size bolt when you start threading that in there. Uh, we're going to give this a couple of uh, pushes and see what happens here. All right, I make no promises that I'm going to succeed at the first try, but we're going to push down on this, bring this strong arm around a few times. I'm tightening that bolt in. And I might have to go get myself a long extension depending on how far this bolt pushes into the face of this clutch. We're holding it in here. It's got to be pushing on that crank, that's for sure. That is a grade A hard bolt. So I guarantee you that whatever it's doing on that crankshaft is working. It's pushing hard. And at some point, we should have a pop. Oh, there we go. That really bottomed out. Okay. Come on, buddy. Oh, it's close. It's close. <laughs> it's close. I can feel it. <clears throat> it's really close. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> well, I'm going to keep reefing on this and see what happens. Okay, I've got this bolt pretty darn tight right now. I'm going to give it a couple whacks and see if that helps break it loose. And if that doesn't, then I will uh, try my impact driver, but we'll see what we can do here. I'm thinking this might shock it because there's a lot of preloaded pressure there. All right, well, let's try this. <laughs> All right, I think we're loose. <laughs> All right, this is cool. All right, now that we got the clutch off the snowmobile, grab yourself a number seven Allen wrench or Allen wrench uh, bit that you can drive with a ratchet. I'm thinking you're going to want something you can drive with a ratchet because um, we're going to take off these three Allen bolts. Off, the, off of this clutch so we can pull this face up. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm learning as I go here. I've never worked on a, a hex clutch before, but in retrospect, I'm realizing that it would be, it'd probably be easier to take out these, through, uh, these three Allen bolts while the clutch is on the snowmobile motor because it'd be very stationary, it'd be held tight, uh, it might work well for you, but what I'm going to do as I'm starting to work on this, I'm realizing what works for me is I put my knees on the center of this like this, push down on it, and then that gives me real nice relief to be able to break those loose. So yeah, just like this, I'm kneeling on it, pushing down on it, and then that lets me turn this out pretty easily. So if you have your clutch off your sled, maybe this is what you want to do. All right. 
I got these these bolts out and I'm gonna let the pressure off of this gently because there's a spring under there. There we go, okay. And then this comes up like that. And there's the spring right there. You can set that off to the side in our little uh, tool tub there. And then I get to start seeing what the heck is going on in here. Just looking at everything here, the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna back these out. There's three of them here. And uh, oops, they create a, a collar around here, around the center shaft. So I'm gonna back all these out. They need a 3 8 inch open end box end to crack these nuts loose. So I'm gonna tackle that and see if I can get some, some movement there. What I'm actually gonna do, because this is a little square head, I have no idea, maybe that's like a 3 16 or something like that. Um, I'm gonna try backing my lock nuts all the way to the head and see if there is any luck on, yep, it's turning, on that nut just turning out that way or that bolt turning out that way rather than going and trying to find some little bitty driver that's a square head. I don't even know what that is. So try that tactic. Maybe that'll work for you. For this one over here, it just seemed like it was too much stress using the open end box end. So I did grab my crescent wrench, put it on there, and it's breaking loose pretty good on that one. Uh, it goes without saying, if you watch any of my videos, I drench everything in penetrating oil before I even start working. So, yeah, this is all soaked up, and it's been probably soaking for about an hour now. So that does seem to work in here and give me a little uh, help as I'm trying to break loose those the heads of those bolts. Okay, I got my last uh, first one out here. That's a lot longer than I expected, and it does look like it has a bit of a a point on it so it must uh, press into the shaft and create tension to hold this entire mechanism in place all right so here we are got the the three pins out bolt pins uh, I'm not really gonna sh not really sure what's gonna happen here uh, oh okay so this comes out of the way interesting and then I'm guessing this comes out of the way all right um, all right, now I'm going to wiggle around on it and find out what comes next. Okay, mental note, pretty sure these washers are shot. I'm 99% sure they aren't supposed to be all rounded out like that. I think they're actually supposed to have a nice clean shoulder, like maybe on the outer edge here. And they're completely deteriorated. So, setting those off to the side. Uh, this seems to come up pretty nicely. If I can get it to get it, have a proper pull, it should come right up. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so that comes away like that, and here is the weights and the wheels and the swing arms that are kind of the critical success factor for riding on these ramps and helping to sling this face out, which then, of course, creates tension on the belt. I was thinking that this would slide off, but when I looked down in here, there is a second notch on here, and it looks to me like this hex collar is actually designed to stop at this second notch. I'll investigate more, but I think that this will not slide up off of here. Uh, I think I have to actually p press out these uh, three pins, and then I could slip it off. Okay, I was wrong. It's just that there was a lot of um, sort of wear out fatigue happening in this hex collar. And so it was actually jammed up with whatever this material is, Deliron or Hayfax or you know, some sort of like a epoxy plastic material. This collar was all messed up. So now that I have it pulled past, it seems like it's going to come up and I'll work it off of this shaft. Okay, yeah, now we can see all those little fragments of wore out plastic that were hanging up and not letting it come off the shaft. Sometimes you take a project as far as you can go and then eventually you figure out, you gotta cry uncle. Uh, what I'm getting at here is, I was worried about this washer because it's kind of wore out here, right? And this one's the same way, they're just really, really wore out. Well, I was hoping that this was like the expendable part of the steel that wears away. Unfortunately, 
this drive shaft that is completely deteriorated you can see the original machining groove right there that's where it should be a hard straight edge that those washers set into but it is completely wore away so I would bet money on the fact that these three set screws that were poking in to the sides of this shaft like that um, they were not they were not tight and because they were not tight they allowed this to play and because they allowed it to play they allowed this shaft to completely erode and that unfortunately leaves me at a dead stop here with this clutch it's not worth working on because the center shaft is the most important part and if that is not salvageable there's nothing I can replace about that um, we're gonna go ahead and set this one aside and go find another hex clutch to work on work on but uh, I guess I learned some things today on how to work on this particular setup or this style of clutch and thanks for uh, coming along with me today as I fixed it for Josh's sake. Sometimes you don't actually fix it. Sometimes you uh, come to the conclusion that it's better to go look for another resource and that's where I'm at today. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something like I did. Uh, have a great day as we fix it for Josh's sake. Wait, 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 come back, come back. I got to show you this. Uh, I lucked out and I found another hex clutch, pulled it all apart, and this is what I'm talking about. You see how nice that machine groove is and how nice that board hole is? And then this is the washer that looks uh, to have its full depth, full mass of material to it. So as you're working on your hex clutch, uh, make sure you check that out and make sure it holds. What I'm going to be doing on this clutch is I'm going to be ordering some new uh, material here. These Deleron or Teflon or epoxy or plastic, whatever these are made of, I'm going to go find out uh, when I start looking on the internet. But uh, just as I dig into this, there's a couple Allen screws right there. You see that one there and that one there and that one there. So uh, what I'm going to be doing is hitting that with penetrating oil. And cleaning that up real good and then going in there and screwing those out so that this can come out and I'm going to replace it on uh, both parts the the piece that sits back here and the piece that sits on the face so that this can't spin at all and as that can't spin then this can't twist and if that can't twist then this doesn't get eroded so I think we'll kind of be solving a bunch of problems there so that's my theory uh, thanks for watching as we fix this for Josh's sake